Um, so next up, we've got Kieran. So Kieran um, is, as, as you heard earlier on, he is a front end developer here at Space 48. It's a bit of a rock star in his field. Um, anybody that's in the big commerce developer Slack will have seen that. Um, and he was one of the people that I'd noticed um, at Space 48 uh, quite early on. So it'd be great to have him up here to talk about uh, widgets in big commerce. Kieran? Awesome. Cheers, Andrew. Let's uh, see if I can share my screen. So hopefully you can, you should be able, be able to see that. Um, let me know if not, because this will go badly otherwise. Um, so yeah, yeah. What, I, um, what I want to talk about here is sort of powering up um, big commerce with widgets and how the introduction of sort of big commerce page builder has been able to extend the, the core CMS functionality within the platform. So I've been working with um, working in a space for sort of three and a half years, most of that on big commerce. Um, and for me personally, as a, as a front end, this is sort of the, the biggest development that I've been screaming about. And I know a lot of people sort of internally and both in the community as well, I've been, I've been looking at. So I just wanted to sort of share some of the, some of the stuff that we found, some of the stuff that we've done and how we can make it sort of a really viable CMS. So before I do that, I want to sort of take a step back and look at the, the CMS sort of space, as it were, um, as, a, as a whole. As we all know, there's thousands and thousands of CMS providers, and they're all sort of looking to be the, the, the best in their market to pick out a few sort of Shogun, Styler, Contentful, Ampliance, etc. They're all They're all brilliant in their own right, and they've all got sort of pros and cons when you're discussing with a client or a merchant to whether that is the right CMS platform for them to go forward. Um, obviously the cons as a, as a development team is something we have to, we have to look at quite, uh, quite strongly. Obviously we, we want to make sure that our merchants are using that, using the right stack. So some of those cons might include sort of lack of any data flowing between, um, the big commerce platform and the, the CMS itself or even just the lack of a, a sort of pre-built integration into, into big commerce and potentially the merchant may not have the, the sort of budget there to go and build a, a, build a, a current um, integration to it. So what big commerce have done here is introduce big commerce pa page builder, which is their own sort of in-house CMS that in my opinion, sort of flies under the radar a little bit as a, as a CMS solution um, for big commerce. Um, I know there's sort of a, a stereotype with with some uh, e-commerce platforms that maybe the native CMS solution isn't the most sort of flashiest out there, and that's something that obviously third-party CMSs, something like Styler and Shogun, sort of look at to try and to try and bring people in. But what we've noticed with the work that we've that we've done with Page Builder and what we've seen the community do is that it can be just as powerful as these other third-party CMSs, if not more so. So what page builder is essentially on the, on the face of it is its own sort of drag and drop visual editor um, across the site. And from sort of first glance, it looks the sort of standard run of the mill page builder that you would see in, in other platforms, say a, a Shogun, for example. But I think what is really good with big commerce is how extensible the platform is um, and how with a little bit of development, whether that's through merchants developing themselves or whether through whether it's through an agency, we're able to sort of really power up that functionality and be able to to give a lot more to 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 a merchant and ultimately the, the end user who's looking at the site. So all of this is possible um, through through widgets, and they can they can solve so many problems that we that we've seen um, or problems that might come up with other with other CMS platforms. So what are widgets, basically? Um, widget development is mainly made up of, of sort of two parts. So you've got widget regions and widgets themselves. Um, so I'll touch on the, the regions, uh, regions first. BigCommerce has a, um, a standard set in place where you can have both um, scoped regions, which will hit a, an individual page, and you're able to go and change the content of that on, on any of the page pages. And normally these are outlined in white. So an example here would be the, the demo single page region, 
where that content will only stay on that same page. And if you go to another page, you'll be able to update the content there. The, the other example is uh, more global regions. So where you've got content that will persist across all of the pages um, that use that sort of template. So look at your, your header, for example, you may be included a, a notice banner or a, um, a USP banner just below the, um, below the navigation and you'd want to persist them across sort of all of the pages. So by having this global attribute attached to the region name, you're able to go in and display that content across them all. So then moving into sort of widget templates and, and how they work, again, there's, there's two main sort of functional blocks here. There's a split between array types, which are multiple, multiple data points where you're able to go and change configuration. So block one, two, three, four in an array type may have, may have different data between them. Whereas you have tab type, which is a, a single, um, more of a single data point and you're able to, again, go in and change that functionality. Um, so at this point, I'm going to try and switch screen and try and give a sort of run through of some of the, some of the sort of templates that we can put together and how that sort of code differs between using an array type and a, um, and a tab type. So in true wanting to avoid doing a live demo fashion, here's one that somebody prepared earlier. Um, and as you can see, the big commerce page builder widgets are built up from schema. So schema, as a lot of you are aware, um, gives configuration to the merchant, to the client and both, and us as development teams too, to be able to go and change options across the site, whether that be something simple as a button going from primary to secondary to tertiary, or whether that be something more technical in terms of going to entirely different layout structures. So as, as you can see here, we've got the, the basis of what the, the widget schema would be. And we label that as the configuration. And that's where the merchant would probably spend most of their time within these blocks. So a lot of it is based around sort of key value pairs where you've got your label and your value. And what we tend to find a lot of both ourselves and within the sort of default widgets that big commerce use is that a lot of the time the value is relative to a, a CSS class on the site. So button to uh, button primary, for example, that will go and link to a, a primary button across the site. And we can inject that into our templates to go and change the look and feel of a button. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the, the plus points around schema is fully the control. Um, so big commerce in their documentation provide us a lot of helpers that we could go in and um, change, whether that be a range um, field, which is a, a draggable slider, whether that be number, et cetera, et cetera, and give us the, the building blocks to basically create pretty much every configuration we would want to be able to create. Um, and again, pass that over to a merchant, allow them to go in fully control the look and feel of their site. Um, because at the end of the day, a lot of the time it's the merchant populating this content rather than sort of development teams and giving them that freedom to go in, style this up how they want and create sort of immersive e-commerce experiences is a positive for everyone. It's what everyone wants. Everyone wants a, a shiny, flashy site that will engage the user rather than something that they're just trying to get on and off as soon as possible. Um, so a lot of the, um, schema switch round is controllable through page builder itself. So I can give a little quick rundown of, sort of what happens within page builder. Um, so here you've got examples of your, um, non-global regions where you can place these upon a page and drag and drop different widgets in, whether that be from the, the core big commerce offering, um, which has a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to, to customize to a design or whether that be from something that's been custom built, say, say a notice banner. Um, and what I really want to dive into here is more the, the schema side. So if we go and add a, a content block, for example, we're able via the schema to go and set defaults that 
make this make this widget look like something when it's brought to the site. There'd be nothing worse for a merchant dragging on a dragging on a block and having to select every single option to go and sort of update that because like I said earlier, we want to create those immersive layouts and we want to do it in a way that's as easy as possible for the merchant. So within here, based off the schema, we've got different options whereby text fields can be added, CSS classes, etc., um, buttons and, and images. Um, and what the, the really great thing about this is, is built well, this schema can massively be reused. So across different widget types, and across different um, ones that we've built in the past. A lot of the schema gets reused, which not only helps us keep the code sort of clean, um, and we're not all writing the same code, but different syntax, et cetera. And it also helps the trust from the merchant, I suppose, because there's nothing worse than being able to drag one widget on, getting used to the setup and, and how the configuration changes on those and then having to go back and learn it in an entirely different widget. So repeating that um, that schema across multiple widgets is, is ideal. So here we've got an example of the, the array type here, whereby this widget will work if there's only one block entered, or we can add more and more um, and keep updating that to respond to the templating. Um, with these text and button types also being examples of tab types. So for a more realistic version, let's go here. So notice banner, again, a widget that everyone uses on their site. We we don't notice them half the time, but they're they're there, they're there to create convey sort of really important information across. So these tab types will just provide very simple. Um, functionality for a user to go and change. And what the great thing is, is we can go and hide, hide all of the configurable options. So as a merchant, we don't want to go and uh, as a development team, we don't want to go and expose every option up front to the, to the merchant because there'd just be an overload of data and it's, it's unfriendly for the merchant. So what we do is we hide them behind these design tabs, um, which are a, a type that are included in BigCommerce. And it really just allows us to go and structure how we go and present that information across to them, um, whilst also give, giving them the freedom to sort of have default set where they don't have to go and change this. If a client wanted their site to go and look like this, for example, there's no configuration for them to go in to go and change. Um, so that's that's sort of a, a brief run through on how page builders sort of running and how we're how we're working with that. Um, so what I want to touch on is, well, that's all well and good. We can build a widget. We can, we can style a widget. We can add it to a page. That's great. But how can we actually use these widgets to go and solve one, solve problems and to create content that's immersive to a, to a user looking at it. So what I've been able to do here is pull together sort of a, a case study from a project that we we've worked on recently with with Stanley Cramworld, who um, were migrating from Magento across to Big Commerce and came to us with a um, a, a request where they can control the entire navigation structure um, th themselves, basically, which would give them full control over putting whatever categories, content, etc., that they wanted to add in there. Now. This isn't an uncommon request. Um, we're seeing this a lot of a lot more with merchants that are coming across from a platform like Magento, where you can have a separate category structure and a separate navigation structure. Whereas within Big Commerce, they're sort of intertwined. So, with the client using Page Builder CMS at the time, what we decided to do is try and find a solution within that platform. Um, and what we were able to do was leverage the existing functionality in BigCommerce for the, the very top level navigation items. And within that dropdown, completely wiping any, um, any loops that would pull through from, so any subcategories. And what we opted to do is through the use of using the global regions and through some, some styling and some uh, additional JS in the background, just to help with the, with the sort of transition between the, the tabs we were able to give the client a template whereby 
they were able to go and pull in ex either existing widgets like subcategory block down here, which was a very simple widget. It purely it purely controls the sort of the name and the link, but it was just a more structured way we could pass that over. Or they could go and add custom HTML um, and even other widgets like the the product selector as you sort of see on the right here. So an example of how we did that was concatenating the ID. So each of these top level big commerce categories will go and populate to us an ID. And what we were able to do is take that and concatenate the, the region name to the end of it. Um, and that allowed each of the drop downs to go in, persist that data. And if for some reason prams and push chairs were turned off for a period of time, once they were turned back on, the ID would remain the same and the content would come back for the user. Um, adding all of that together, um, and we were able to go and sort of achieve a, um, a, a fully functioning nav where the client had sort of more full control and were able to, to populate the content as they wanted. So I could show a better example of that now, just because I don't think the, the GIF does it to justice. Scroll up. And what, what we were able to do is create, a, create an experience where unless you knew the code and were looking at the code, it would just look like sort of a, a more advanced big commerce navigation and you wouldn't have any sort of clue that it was actually driven by page builder. Um, so another example that we've seen a couple of times now is using data to drive these page builder regions. And this links into some of the some of the handlebar statements that Matt was talking about earlier. So we tend to leverage um, filter quite a lot for these um, for these custom fields. And what we're able to do basically is um, hide and show different content regions dependent on that data. So if you've got an ERP plugged in, or even a merchant's just changing um, product data themselves we're able to leverage that and, and change the content. So the example that we've used here is product promotion. There may be an example where you're using sort of a two for one offer um, and you're able to go and populate a widget that will show on all of the products that show two for one um, and be able to sort of link that and um, link to a category where they are, for example. Whereas if a product has, for example, last chance to buy, then we can pull that through again so what we do here is we, um, we're pulling through the value of what that custom field is returning. And again, using that as part of the, with the, the global tag to allow it to apply to all sorts of products, as long as they're all using the same PD glue templating. So moving on to landing pages and blog, this is where we're getting more into the generic CMS category where you look at your you look at your CMS options like Shogun and um, Styler, and this is where they sort of this is where the main functionality of this is used. So, using um, template layouts, which I'll come on to a little bit later, we're able to go and create designs for um, custom landing pages for a category, for example, um, or more immersive blog content than just using, say, a WYSIWYG within BigCommerce, for example and allowing the merchant to tell a story through those blogs um, and be able to sort of include more content, more relevant information or include products, for example, and work across like that. So Pramwell, while I'm on the site, we do this really well and have an entire homepage that is full of um, page builder CMS widgets, basically, both using a combination of widgets that exist within BigCommerce already and using um, custom HTML, which to me is a massively underrated widget within BigCommerce. The, the ability to go and drag and drop HTML onto the site is massive. Like we as a development team can go and build as many widgets as we want. But at the same time, there's always going to be that sort of one requirement where it just doesn't quite fit into one of the, the say, existing widgets and we're wanting a, a, a nice solution. Or if you're working with a merchant, like we were in this case, that is that is quite tech savvy and able to go and sort of build a lot of content themselves via basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it gives them uh, more of an opportunity to go and experiment on the site and go and and go and add different content. So, 
another another way that we use BigCommerce is to utilize third parties within it. So this is just a, a sort of a, a brief summary of some of the, the third parties that we've used within BigCommerce at the minute and within Page Builder specifically. So a lot of these um, a lot of these third parties provide us scripts and provide us very basic HTML blocks that once we put onto the site, they they have content dynamically injected. Now in the past, they may, those regions may have been hard coded through the theme. Um, and it doesn't really offer much flexibility to the user or the, the merchant to go and reposition them, go and restyle the site, how they see fit. Um, take a Nosto block on the homepage, for example, in previous time where we would have hard coded that. Whereas we may decide tomorrow that we want to go and feature a Nosto block, um, or we may want to move it down the page, et cetera. So, by using either the HTML widget or building a, a custom widget for ease that purely accepts maybe a Nosto ID, for example, is a really nice way to be able to go and move that content around and in essence, provide a blank canvas to the, to the client to go and build them across. Something like Page Scheduler, which Tom at Space48 has spent a lot of time working on, will allow us to go in and change the change the content of a home page on a sort of a, a schedule which isn't something that na natively exists in big commerce which does in maybe other cmss so was built as a solution to to be able to go and sort of fix that problem that we that we'd seen at that point so i said earlier i'd, I'd touch on widget uh, widget regions again and i think it's a very key point to make that we can go and build a lot of a lot of widgets in BigCommerce and make them look brilliant and with full sort of modification to the for the uh, merchant. But at the same time, regions are much more the sort of backbone of how of how we put these across. And I just wanted to take a second to sort of step back and and look at this. In what I did say to myself was a plea to sort of developers and designers, um, and that is the content doesn't need to be boring. Um, we've, we've all seen sort of basic e-commerce e sites where the, 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 the full intent is obviously to, to push the, the users through that sort of conversion funnel. And that's, that's all well and good, but I think the times are, times are changing a lot at the minute and we're seeing a lot of content be used as a really powerful tool to sort of tell a story on an e-commerce site and fully engage that user and get them to sort of buy into your brand um, with the end goal of obviously converting in that initial instance, but then coming back and continuing to convert. So I've taken some inspiration from Dan Davies at Space48 and also Andy Clark, who is a um, development author and their work that they've done on sort of using more print design and bringing that into the, into the world of e-commerce. So a lot of the a lot of the, the benefits with something like a CMS and especially with something as built into the platform as page builder is that we can go and place these regions in a way that provides a, a, a template for a user. So take this example for take this as an example. We can go and build a grid layout within CSS to go and say region one should be at the top over here, region two and set them as custom templates where we can pass them over to a user or a merchant and say these are the these are the 10 templates we've built you for example have fun in essence and that's what that's what we want merchants to do we want them to enjoy bringing their their content to life and we don't want it to make to make it a a, a tedious task so what we've done is sort of replicate this through into big commerce and just show how print designs through page builder are entirely possible and it doesn't have to be your net your necessarily your basic two column or three column layout for example we're able to play placing those regions smartly will allow us to go and create a lot more sort of immersive um e-commerce experiences so that that's the sort of the, the plea that i wanted to to bring across as it were that with the with the functionality that we've got we can do so much in page builder and be able to create really really nice buying experiences for a user and by doing that we hopefully will aid conversion we'll hopefully get return customers and we'll hopefully just make everyone 
generally happier. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's what I wanted to speak about today, um, and basically just give an insight into what we've been doing with Page Builder and sort of how we see it going forward. Thank you, Kieran, for that. That was, was pretty insightful. Um, we've got a question there, um, which is regarding navigation regions. Um, if the mega menu is set to show on mouse hover, not mouse click, how can we manage it through Page Builder? Is there any way we can check if it's Page Builder customizer in the mega menu it will appear automatically? That's a good question. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a that's an issue that we that we faced in sort of doing this project. And what we found is obviously page builder um, allow us to tie into a window is page builder function. So we're able to build some JavaScript that says, if you're within the page builder window, the nav will work on click rather than on hover. So you're able to go into the preview tab and in essence, click to open a, a navigation option and then click back to design. I think in previous iterations, we had done it as sort of selecting a CSS attribute and in dev tools and forcing a hover on that. And that's no fun for anyone. So yeah, custom JavaScript is, can be used to sort of force that, that change there. Cool. That's great. And um, a question for me is, uh, it's actually from Tom, but I'm going to steal it. What is your top, uh, what is the top of your wish list for page builder and widget schemas? Um, there's a couple of things really is so the the ability to sort of build those custom layouts both as from a theme side is great but being able to build those within within the platform um in page builder would be great in terms of being able to sort of share that content across pages um and i think another would be sort of widgets within widgets whereby we can go in we can pull a widget onto a page and nest a region within that to go and add more content um maybe creating shop fully shoppable content within images etc um so there there's some of the things that we're, we're looking at in the minute so uh, yeah so thank you very much here really really appreciate that talk